I have to upload more for a PDF, but I have it on paper. That's fine. Just, I just completely just forgot what it is. they test a lot of weapons, missiles, bunkers. So next Monday and Tuesday, I will be hitting both places for my research at Virginia Tech, so I will miss class. There will be more, but I will try to minimize it, and I will try to make the evening test to make up for at least two of those missed classes. So no class Tuesday. Don't come. So the assignment will be put off for to be due next First day. Questions? Okay, so without any uh, further instruction, before the lecture, always upload your homework. And then Mark, sorry, Mike will grade that uh, as I discussed last time. And the solution for the homework will then be posted on Canvas end of today. So if I were you, it's very important to make sure you look at, look at those homework solutions because the grading by Mike is not very detailed. If you don't think you have done the problem correctly, look at those solutions. If you're still not clear how the solution work during the office hour or after class, seek us out and make sure you know how to do the homework without any questions whatsoever. Because that's the minimum foundation for the test. All right, question on that detail? Anyone? So the agenda today in the center here, so I'm going to touch on the old homework. Every lecture, I open myself for any question on the old homework. The first set, I think, is pretty straightforward. But if you have a question, I'll be happy to answer it. And then I'm going to dive back into continuity, uh, starting with this building block. We're going to add more spice to this very fundamental layout that I gave you last time. What do you do when the flow becomes unsteady? What do you do when the velocity is not perpendicular to the area, like the garage problem, which we'll touch on? And then we're going to make the equation of continuity more and more general that you can use to solve a whole variety of problems in real life. You know, in this class, introductory problems are very simple, just to build a foundation. But in real life, there are a lot more twists to what we learn here, as well beyond what we can cover. But at least you get a glimpse of what those are. Uh, then we're going to look at the four homework. They're all in chapter five from the new edition. Edition 8, 12, 13, 17, and 22. <coughs> Each one I will touch on without solving that for you. I'll lay out the problem statement. I'm going to basically ask you to answer a few questions. During which I don't want you to copy any notes, because I want you to just do your homework. All right? If you can help answer the question, you basically give yourself some leeway in doing the homework. But I won't do it for you. But touching on those, some of them are a little bit intriguing, will help you to save time. Then, at the last half of the lecture, I will start a new equation. Chapter five, which is what we are dealing with, is the most difficult chapter to understand in fluid mechanics. Control volume, concept is weight. It's not something you can see. I'm blowing air, you can't see it moving. But the most challenging concept to grip is right now in the next two, three weeks. So momentum is one of those. You're going to pull in your hair and have a lot of confusion, and I'll do my best to clarify. So we're going to start today and continue on for the at least next two of the three lectures. Uh, if time permits, I will touch on units. 
Well, I started last time, how to deal with pound force, pound mass. Hopefully most of you are on top of that. But, you know, I want to be sure, and I can't risk not having you have a good grip of that. Any questions on the agenda? Anyone? Okay, so the assignment then, we have posted on Carver's uh, a handout about T sub C, with it at your leisure. By the time I go over that. Chapter two, uh, section 2.2 two of chapter 5 is on momentum. Section sub 1 is on continuity, which you have read. So we're going to start that today with some very simple example, just like we did with this guy. And to do the physics so you understand what's going on. And then again, just like continuity, we're going to add more and more spice to the momentum equation to make it more general. Three hours for the homework it is a heavy dose, but you have almost the whole week to complete that. If you have a question, make use of the office hour. The other set of homework, which is due a week and a half from now, is also given, but we'll touch on that when we reconvene on next Thursday. Okay, any question on the administrative side? Okay, very good. So, any question on the old homework? This is one of them, where you are given so-called hydraulic jump. This can happen when water is released from the dam, like the Claydolic Dam or the slip on the dam. When that happens, it's a transient, it's, it's not steady. But the water being released from the dam can rush down the river, in some condition, there can be a jump at this continuity where the water level just suddenly rises. And that's what this problem is. Any question on doing this one? I think it's straightforward. Is the dimension into the paper critical? Do you need to be told what is the dimension into the paper in terms of the depth into the paper? I call it depth, not, not H. Do you no. need to be told? No. As long no. as it stays constant. As long as it stays constant. This is what we call a two-dimensional problem. This concept of per unit depth. Again, the depth here is into the paper, not the height H. It's not something we use many times over. So it could be one foot or one meter. It could be three meter or three feet. It is inconsequential. Why? Because in the continuity, in the role VA, it can be simplified and cancel out, right? How? First and foremost, the density constant cancel out. The area for this will be what times what? On station one. The height, the height. H1, which is the height, right? times the depth into the paper. Give me any number. How about we call it B, just a dimension, unit. One meter, one foot. On the right side, I have then H2, which is what we asked to solve for, <coughs> times the same depth B. They cancel. This concept for unit depth will be revisited. So if you have question, now is the time to ask. OK, yes? Does that work with any shape? Like, so if it was like a circular annulus, yeah. if it's annulus, depends. Most of the time, yes. But this is strict, strictly two-dimensional. What does that mean, two-dimensional? Meaning, no matter how I cut it, how off and into the board, it looks exactly the same. Okay. Okay. What you describe is axis symmetric, circular, like the lubricating oil problem that we handled last time. It's not two-dimensional, it's axis, has an axis. Symmetric, it's symmetric around that axis. So in the momentum equation that we deal with today, you, you will handle that problem. Yeah. So that, when, when that happens, axis symmetric is not appropriate to call it per unit depth, because it's not, it's not, it's, it's a circle. Other questions, good questions. Okay, so have you done the experiment and asked you to? Washing dishes? You didn't? You know, I can make a quiz right now and ask you to describe them on a piece of paper and we're going to collect it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got an enemy right there. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay, I'll let you go this time. So if you have water splashing directly on a plate, first you spread out radially, right? Has symmetric, not two dimensional. And when the water go out on the disc, it's 
spread as you expect around a circle it jump if you haven't done it I urge you to do it tonight you can literally see that water level finish it here bam go faster okay so I want you to try that <coughs> this discontinuity is the same phenomena or similar phenomena to what we call a shock wave shock wave occur in air is occurring in water. Anyone from Hampton area? Langley Air Force Base? No? There could be a handful. So have you heard an F-15 or F-16 go supersonic? What happened? Sonic boom. You have a sonic boom? That's a sonic boom. You have a discontinuity of tremendous pressure change and velocity change, like here that causes the lead drum to hurt. That's a shock wave. That's fluid at the highest level, compressible flow, density is not constant, so on and so forth. Right? So you can relate some of this very fundamental homework to more real life situation. All right, okay. Any question on other homework that do today? So I want to extend this hydraulic jump problem to your next set of homework which is problem 5.22. So what is 5.22? It's a cousin of this problem, whereby you also have a jump of water. So here's where I don't want you to copy. So you're just allowed to listen, because this is your assignment. I have water going to a channel, and then all of a sudden the water level rises. Coming in, the velocity and the flow is uniform. Just like we have for this problem. Uniform. Right? The twist to this new problem is downstream. When the flow jumps, the velocity is no longer uniform. It's not. It has given a profile of you. Can you see if I find you those on the far left? Can you see the board? Again, if you cannot, you have to raise your hand to tell me. I cannot. Otherwise, no. So in the problem statement, you were told this velocity u, which is the velocity in the x direction. <coughs> Sometimes we use the nomenclature Vx interchangeably. So x coordinate is parallel to the flow in the streamlined direction, y is perpendicular to the flow. So I have now xy coordinate established. And you are told in the problem statement that the station downstream at 2, the velocity is not uniform, but it's a parabola. So for all problem, the first step I want to emphasize is you must draw a control volume so that I know what you're analyzing. I know it sounds trivial, but until then, Mike and I have no idea what, when you apply the continuity and momentum equation, what space in the domain that you're applying those equation to. So draw the control volume. So this is the new choice. And if you look at how this velocity profile look like, I'm going to ask you to look at two so-called boundary condition, B, C, not Boston College. <laughs> boundary, boundary on the edge, condition. What happened there? What happened to the edge? Where are the edges on this point two of the control volume? There are two, right? One is at the wall, Y to zero. The other one is on the edge where y, you are told the station at 2 is 1 foot so I'd like you to tell me what that 2 velocity u at the two boundaries are just so that I can have a feel for what the velocity profile look like it's not uniform, it's not like here or here. It's not. So 
So how do you handle that? Or what, what is the velocity at y equal to zero right at the wall? Look at what happened when y is zero. So on the grid. Velocity is zero right at the wall. No velocity. There's a special term that's associated with that. And the fact is, the wall is stationary. The wall is trying to slide on top of the wall. The wall says, no way, you're not going anywhere. I'm holding you, and you're going to be fixed at zero velocity because I am not moving, and you are not moving. That's called the low stiff condition. <coughs> Two and a half months later, when we look at viscous flow in boundary layer, we will revisit this. But it's a very important concept for you to remember. And you have probably seen this in 21-24, if you remember. In what context? Someone tell me. In 21-24, in fluid path, which I asked you to reveal, is important. Have you learned the concept of viscosity? You have. That's where you've been exposed to this low state condition. Do you remember? Okay, read up on it because you're going to need all this background. So with that said, and the velocity at the top one foot is simply two feet per second. That's the maximum velocity. So what I have then is a profile that's zero velocity and maximum at the top, and it's a parabola. Real fluid always behave this way, because real fluid has viscosity, velocity, because of the low state condition is zero at the wall. This is an idealized, simplified version, which makes our calculation a whole lot easier. And 90% of the problem will be assuming uniform velocity, unless you are told otherwise. Do you get the concept? Yes? Why is there slip on the top surface? Why there's no slip? Why there is slip on the top? Because this is not confined by a solid wall that is stationary. The reason this is zero velocity is because the wall is not moving. On here, there's no wall. Okay. The flow okay. is free to do whatever it wants. No constraint. Right? That's the reason. If I have two parallel plates, then, then it changes. Two parallel plates is what you learn in, in your 21-24 about viscosity. If the two plates are both stationary, then yes, what you say is correct. Zero here, zero here. Parabola. Because it's free on the other side, velocity can be anything you want. That's the difference. Got it? Questions? Okay. How do you do this one? And how is it different from the previous one? Anyone? Again, I'm not going to do it for you. What have changed? No clue? Yes? The flow changes uh, based on the height. Yeah. The last question. Yeah, that's the distinction. Very subtle. But now my velocity is not uniform. In the past, I just erased it there. You have V1. A1 equal to V2, A2. I took away the density because it's constant. What are you going to do now? This A2 is not uniform. You can't just multiply them. What are you going to do? No clue. How about I give a hint? Think calculus. Integrate. You integrate. You integrate. How? I don't know. That's your problem. <laughs> okay? I think I set you up for this problem. Let's move on. So that's done. Already. Let's go back to look at some physics of this continuity equation by way of this simple problem. Now the diagram here was the first thing we do before you do anything else. Control one, thank you. Otherwise, I don't know what you're talking about, and I cannot grade you. So here is very simple. And what we said last time, <coughs> it's 
just a review, and then we're going to build on this. Is that this M dot, which is mass flow rate in kilogram per second, in and out will be equal, and they can be calculated by product of rho V A. What assumption I make when I said that? Hmm? I make one inherent assumption in order to make this happen. I covered that last time. Anyone else? Steady state. Yeah. Steady state. Steady state. The water level is not rising. So this is only steady. Steady, steady flow. This M dot is what I call mass flow weight. Now, I'm going to generalize it. I'm going to start looking at unsteady problem. And what I do then, I want to look at verbally. Mass flow weight in minus mass flow weight out of the control volume. And then I'm going to expect to express the difference on the left hand side. So if it is zero on the left hand side, then it's a steady problem. So it boils down to the same thing. But if it's not steady, if the water level is not rising, going up, the difference between these two, in and out, will be then accounted for by weight of increase of mass in my control volume. I want to pause and let you digest this and see if you agree. And, and the sign is important because when we come to momentum equation, you're going to ask me the same question. The sign is such that I have in minus out, what's coming from the top minus what's going out at the bottom. The net of that represents the increase. Do you agree? Okay. Mathematically, 